All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. For those of you that are new here, my name is Drew Sims, and for the past two and a half years, I've been living out of my Jeep as a freelance photographer and filmmaker, and today I'm out in Stanley, Idaho, doing two nights of winter camping. As you guys can tell, I've got my heavy snow jacket on. This is the first time I've done this in any of the winter camping vlogs, and that's because it's about 21 degrees out right now, and tonight's gonna be 15, and tomorrow night's gonna be a low of nine. So this is the coldest I've camped in so far. Gonna be a chilly couple of nights, but excited to be out here. I've actually been to Stanley probably seven or eight times and have done 100 plus miles of backcountry in the Sawtooth and explored pretty much every forest service road in the area. But this time through, it's, it's much, much different. There's nobody here, probably 95% less people than over the summer and over the fall. And for good reason, like I said, it's, it's gonna be a cold couple of nights. If you guys have seen previous vlogs, I usually deal with a foot or two of snow on forest service roads and, and trying to find cool camp spots. But this time through is gonna be a little bit different. If you get off the main road around Stanley, it's more like four to five feet of snow up past my waist and up to my chest. And all the roads are shut down and are only accessible by snowmobile. So I'm gonna to have to find a spot today to camp. I actually got here yesterday and wanted to do three nights of camping, but just kind of dealt with a ton of road closures and just kind of explored the area yesterday to kind of figure out a game plan for the next two nights. Tonight, I'll be sleeping in the rooftop tent. Like I said, it's gonna be a low of 15. And then tomorrow night, I'm gonna be actually sleeping in the Jeep because I'm gonna be up early for sunrise the following day and hitting a hot springs. I'm planning on hitting two hot springs while I'm here, which will be super nice just because it's freezing temperatures right now and might get a little bit of snow over the next two days too. So it'll be nice to soak for a bit in hot springs. I'm only staying two nights because they're actually supposed to get hit with a decent sized storm in the next few days. And you're probably wondering why I don't want to stay for that. But the storm's going to be a foot or two of snow and temps down to a low of negative 10. So I definitely don't want to get stuck out here for that. And don't want to have to worry about getting stuck out here. So I'm going to head back over the pass and just get down into Sun Valley and head down south a little bit to warmer temps. But yeah, let's go ahead and try to find a decent spot to camp. I won't be able to get too far off the road, but as long as I can get a fire going and set the tent up, I'll be pretty happy. If you guys aren't already, make sure to subscribe. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And also a big shout out to everyone who already is subscribed and who's been watching and commenting. That means a ton. And we just hit 100,000 subscribers on this channel. So that's huge for me and a ton of motivation to keep putting in work and spending time making videos like this for you guys. But yeah, let's get the heat cranking in the Jeep and go find a camp spot.
Well, we're stuck. I've been driving around for about an hour and a half and found a spot that I can camp at that I've actually camped before. There's some trees over there that are probably 40 yards, 50 yards off the road. And what's nice is there is a paved snow plowed road behind me. There's actually a ranch up top, probably 200, 300 yards up. It's got a gate up there, so that starts the private land. This is all public still. And luckily this road is snow plowed, like I said. Unluckily though, I pulled off the road a little too far and got stuck. But my plan is to just dig myself out really quick. Literally see the road is right there, so my back tires are still on the actual road. But the Jeep, as you can see, the snow is up past my knees right now and it's, it's caught the undercarriage of the Jeep and that is preventing my tires from actually getting traction. I've got a full size pair of boards in the mail right now, but I knew coming up to Idaho, I should have some kind of recovery equipment other than the winch, because obviously the winch right now is useless because I need to back up and I move forward. But these have been great. I used them yesterday just to test them out and they worked super well. They're really compact and they fit in the Jeep, which is nice. I don't have to worry about mounting them to the exterior. But for now, I'm going to shovel out as much snow as I can underneath, throw these under the front tires. Once I'm out, I'm gonna actually shovel out just a 10 by 10 space here. This is the best spot I've found so far and the only spot that's been accessible by vehicle anywhere off the road. I've camped here over the summer. I know you can, I know this is public land and I haven't seen any no camping signs. So I'm gonna dig out, like I said, a little 10 by 10 space and get camp set up. Well, that was a fun little workout and created a nice little base section here already. This is like maybe eight feet wide. So gonna shovel out a little bit more now and hopefully this is camp for the night. Alright, it's definitely not the prettiest setup, but it works. I know some of you guys are probably wondering why did I just do this, but like I said yesterday, I drove around for about three and a half hours, an hour towards Kirkman, and then back to Stanley, an hour towards Chalice, and then back to Stanley, and literally couldn't find one single pull off on the side of the road or any open forest service road. So going to drive down a little bit first to get firewood. Um, this area around here doesn't really have any dead trees, and I don't want to cut down. Um, a live tree obviously so I'm gonna drive down a bit get to a pull off and then probably gonna have to snowshoe out a little bit to get to some firewood and then come back set the tent up and gonna do dinner pretty early tonight just because I don't want to be out when it gets down under 20 degrees so let's get that started and get camp set up Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm gonna be trying out this iCamper insulation for the tent. I've never set it up before. I don't know how it's gonna go. I didn't watch any instructionals on how to do it, but I think I can figure it out. And hopefully it keeps the tent a couple degrees warmer tonight.
Well, I ran out of firewood pretty early tonight, which is okay though, because it's starting to get really cold and a little bit windy. So I'm excited to get up into the tent. Hopefully this liner helps out a little bit and keeps it a little warmer tonight because I'm already pretty cold right now. Dinner was great, the lamb chops were great, the Brussels sprouts and potatoes were great, and the gin was just the icing on top. So pretty solid night. But yeah, the moon's out right now. It's actually really pretty. You've got these super fast moving clouds and the moon just kind of popping in and out with some stars. Stanley is actually known for being a dark zone, which just means there isn't really any light pollution in the area. So when it is clear, the stars are, are super bright and really beautiful out here, but I'm cold. So I'm gonna head up into the tent and warm up. All right, made it up to the tent, got the insulation in, just ran the space heater for about a minute and it warmed up the whole tent. While I was running the space heater though, I cracked this window, I zipped this up and had the exterior window down and cracked a little bit too, just to let a little more airflow in. With this insulation, it feels a little more sealed up than normal and I don't wanna mess around with the space heater. So just cracked a little window for that. My biggest downside so far and something I wish they had done a little bit differently is you're kind of missing out on quite a bit of space on the sides, below and even up top. The, um, Insulation kind of sags in rather than being tight up against the sides and the biggest place I'm going to notice it tonight is here probably missing out on three to four inches And my head's down here So I'm going to be resting up against this instead of having all that open space like you normally do with the tent Obviously this insulation isn't meant to be used year-round So I get it if it works and keeps me a little bit warmer tonight then it's worth it for the winter But just wish it would have been a little tighter up against the edges Oh yeah, going to hop in the sleeping bag. Might get up for sunrise, probably just gonna poke my head out and if it looks clear, I might just put up the drone and maybe shoot with the telephoto lens. The mountains are right across the road. I won't drive because it's gonna be like 15 degrees out so I don't wanna break down the tent in the morning. You can't actually fly in the wilderness area so you can't get super close to the mountains but in the national forest you're allowed to fly drones so I'm gonna throw that up in the morning. But yeah, I will see you guys in the morning.
Good morning, guys. Pretty slow morning today. It's about 10 o'clock right now. I stuck my head out for sunrise. You guys saw I flew the drone a little bit this morning. I honestly, I flew it from inside the tent with the space heater going, because it was about 16 this morning, so a little chilly. I will say the extra insulation with the eye camper definitely helped last night, but I don't know how often I'd really use it. If it was below 20 degrees, I would definitely throw it up there. I think it helped retain heat a lot more, but it kind of takes away the whole convenience and the whole reason you buy an eye camper, and that's, you know, it takes a minute to set up, a minute to break down. I can be in the tent within two minutes with all my gear loaded up and having to undo it and hook the whole insulation up and especially having to take it down this morning was a bit of a pain. It just kind of takes away the main benefit of what the eye camper is. So I get it for winter. Again, if it's below 20, I'll probably throw it up there. But anything above that, I think I'll just have a little bit of extra cold to have the convenience of being able to put it up and down within a minute or so. I'm gonna do dishes. I'm gonna show you guys that a little bit. I know I've been getting a ton of comments asking how I do dishes. It's really nothing interesting, so I won't show too much of it, but I'll give you a quick show of just kind of how it works. Usually when it's this cold out, I just throw the dishes up in the front seat under the passenger side, but the sun's in and out right now and it's warmed up a little bit. So I'm gonna do at least these morning dishes. I don't think I'll do the skillet. I'll probably leave that for when it's a little warmer so I can let it soak. We'll go ahead and do the dishes, get everything loaded up, put the tent down and get to snowshoeing. I'm gonna take a quick break in the video to talk about this week's sponsor, and that is Audible. Audible is the largest online selection of audiobooks, and that's not just traditional audiobooks. It also includes podcasts, guided fitness, meditation, sleep tracks, and much, much more. For the past month, I've been listening to the Dune series by Frank Herbert. I've never really been into sci-fi before, but I've been loving it so far. Being on the road for the last two and a half years, I've pretty much run through all my music, so having an audiobook to listen to while camping and while long road trips has been great. Right now, Audible's offering a risk-free 30-day trial for new members, and that comes with one free audiobook. As a premium member, you can actually select one free audiobook a month, and that's from Audible's entire premium selection. And once that title is chosen and downloaded, that stays in your library forever. If you guys are interested in Audible, make sure to check out audible.com slash Drew Sims or text Drew Sims to 500 500 or just click the link below in the description to get your first audiobook for free. A big shout out to Audible for sponsoring this video.
right, finally made it back to the Jeep after a pretty solid day today with the snowshoeing. And then you guys just saw I ended the day with the hot springs, which was the perfect way to end an eight and a half mile day of snowshoeing. Snowshoeing was great though, and I got super lucky with the sun there for a little bit. I was actually just wearing a sweater and a t-shirt for probably half that hike. Really cool to see Redfish Lake and just that whole area completely empty. You know, usually during the summer, that's kind of a main hub for a bunch of backcountry hikes and you've got the beach there and all the cabins. So it's just super popular and there's a ton of people there, but it was cool to see it just frozen over, a little bit of sun peeking through, some snow coming down and just completely deserted. So as you guys saw, the hot springs was awesome as well. Ended that with a beer and a little bit of hot spring soak and now back to the Jeep and just I'm gonna pull off on the side of the road tonight. Not gonna be setting up the tent, not gonna be doing a fire or anything like that. It's currently 16 degrees out, so I'm deciding to sleep in the Jeep tonight because tomorrow morning I wanna shoot sunrise and tomorrow morning the low is nine degrees. So sleeping in the Jeep is a lot warmer. Plus I can just flip around, start the Jeep, crank the heat and stay in my sleeping bag when I'm ready. I just pop in the front seat and I can drive away without having to you know, break down anything or put anything back in the Jeep. I don't have to leave the Jeep. I can just get from my sleeping bag to the front seat and drive away, which is awesome. After sunrise, I'm gonna to head to actually another hot springs, which should be nice as well. It's just this big cauldron right off the side of the road. I've been there probably a dozen times, but never during the winter, so really excited to see that. Stanley's supposed to get hit with a pretty solid storm starting tomorrow at noon. So I wanna make sure I get out of here in time and get up and over the pass. But yeah, going to set the bed up really quick and then get dinner going. I was gonna do just a super easy freeze dried meal tonight, but instead I'm gonna do uh, pasta, sausage, and a little bit of broccoli with heavy whipping cream, butter, and Parmesan as a sauce. But yeah, let's get dinner going before this temperature drops anymore.
had a tough time getting the water to boil with the pasta because it's so cold out. I should have used the jet boil and then put it in the pot on the actual stove, but got the job done. Any energy that I had after the hot springs is completely gone with that pasta filled meal. So let's get everything set up and get in bed. All right, we made it. Finally in the sleeping bag. I can tell it's gonna be a cold night already. I had the heat blasting while I was brushing my teeth. Now I'm in the sleeping bag. It's been off for about two to three minutes and the Jeep's already getting cold. So I know it's gonna be a cold night, gonna be a cold morning, but I like gotta love winter camping. I've got my zero degree bag, wool socks, base layer on, and it's a mummy bag. So the only thing showing when it's all wrapped up is basically just my eyes. So it'll be a warm night as long as I'm in the bag. I'm not worried about it. But hopefully sunrise isn't too cloudy and the sun actually comes out tomorrow. It'd be great. And yeah, I will see you guys in the morning.
All right, well that pretty much wraps up this vlog. I just got done with the hot springs probably an hour ago. As you guys saw, sunrise was beautiful this morning, super clear skies, and even in the hot springs, it was pretty much blue skies the whole time. So a beautiful morning, but as you can see behind me now, there's some pretty dark clouds rolling in, so I'm trying to make it up and over the pass into Sun Valley before the storm really gets here. This winter camping vlog has by far been the most difficult to get through and the most difficult to try to film while camping, dealing with a lot more snow than usual, dealing with a ton of inaccessibility and also temperatures that are much, much colder than what I'm used to. I definitely enjoyed the last couple days, but it was much more of a challenge than usual, which is fun in itself. So I, I definitely enjoyed it and can't complain when I got to hit two hot springs that were surrounded by snow and, and pretty much had those to myself while I was there. Also really cool just to be back in Stanley. Like I said, I've been here, you know, probably seven or eight times during the summer. So to see it in winter was really cool. If you guys wanna follow along with more up-to-date statuses on where I am and also see a little bit more of my photography, make sure to follow me on Instagram at drew.sims. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.